me see your digits. What? No, I don't want your phone number. Let me see your finger. <laughs> Science Hello there, science lover. Didn't, didn't see you there. Didn't see Marie you there. Here. And I've got here. a very, and I've got a handy topic today. Fingerprints. Everybody's got them. Well, most people got them. And it's time that you learned more about them. A fingerprint is the patterning that is formed by the ridged skin on our fingertips. This type of skin is found all on our bodies, from the palms of our hands to the soles of our feet. Human fingers have small ridges on them, which are similar to mountains and valleys when you look closely. These ridges are unique in every human, and they can also be used for identification. So contrary to popular belief, you're not fingerprinted as a kid, and you'll only need to be fingerprinted for certain types of jobs or for something crime related. AKA, stay out of trouble. Fingerprints are a means to identify you since they make you unique. No two people have the same fingerprints, not even identical twins. So how do fingerprints form? Early on in field development, lumps of stem tissues called volar pads grow under the skin on each finger. There are three basic types of fingerprint patterns based on the Henry system for classification. There's loops, whorls, and arches. And based on these main types, there can be different variations like a tented arch. See, it looks like a little tent. Now, some of the makeup of your fingerprint is based on genetics, like the volar pad size and orientation. This means that many relatives and most identical twins have the same main patterns on the fingers. So the main pattern, which is the general shape that your prints make, is a product of your genes. How your fingerprints grow is actually how you get the unique features. Factors within your mother's womb, like growing nerves and capillaries, fluid pressure changes, gravity, speed of growth, and more, influence the final patterns. So fingerprints are unique, like snowflakes. Why are they important? Well, for one, they can't really be altered. While you can get a new name or alter your appearance, on purpose or not, your fingerprints will still be yours. Well, what if I get rid of my fingerprints? Well, you can sure try. Each ridge of the epidermis, the outer layer of skin, is dotted with sweat pores for its entire length and is anchored to the dermis, the inner layer of your skin. Injuries such as burns, abrasions, or cuts do not affect the ridge structure. The original pattern is duplicated in any new skin that grows. In order to truly obliterate your fingerprint, every layer of skin must be removed. So you can technically get rid of your fingerprints, but it rarely works. Even if you burn certain areas, fingerprint examiners will use a different area to analyze. So you're probably looking at your fingers and wondering how examiners examine fingerprints. A trained fingerprint examiner compares the small details, including the shapes that the ridges and lines form and where the lines end or split. Think of it like comparing two different pictures. You remember those exercises, spot the difference? The picture is almost identical, but there's always a few key things that are different. Like in this example, there's an extra blueberry and there's an extra blueberry. Fingerprints found at a crime scene, or latent prints, are often partial or smudged. So the first step is to determine if there's enough detail in order to make the print good enough for comparison. If there's not enough detail to go off of, no further analysis is done. I did mention that based on the Henry system for fingerprints, there are three main patterns, but the FBI uses a variation. In this variation, there are eight types. Radial loop, ulnar loop, double loop, central pocket loop, plain arch, tented arch, plain whirl, and accidental. Let's look at my fingers for example, starting with my left hand. My thumb has an ulnar loop, while my pointer and middle finger have tented arches. Finishing off my left hand, my ring finger and pinky both have an ulnar loop as well. Moving on to my right hand, my pinky, ring finger, middle finger, and thumb all have a radial loop, while my pointer finger is a tented arch. If you haven't already, take a look at your fingers and figure out what type of pattern your fingers have and be sure to let us know. That's gonna wrap up today's episode. If you liked today's episode and wanna see more in 300 seconds or less, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow ZTV 300 Seconds of Science on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Thank you for your time and be sure to keep wondering.
This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. Do you want to gain experience in video production, professional social media, or working with real clients? Visit the UA School of Communications online or follow us on social media to learn more. ZTV. Make media make a difference.